If we define extroversion as objective in the sense that it is on good terms with objects and wants to relate itself directly with them, and then define introversion as subjective in the sense that it is not on good terms with objects but rather with the subject and always relates to objects secondhand through the lens of the subject. And if we then define sensation as the perception of the actual current nature of a thing, then we may roughly define extroverted sensation as perceiving the actual current nature of objects, and thus introverted sensation as perceiving the actual current nature of the subject's relationship to objects. And that's all basically a convoluted version of how I described extroverted intuition and introverted intuition. The one is concerned with objects in the world, the other with one's subjective impressions of objects in the world. Thus, extroverted sensation is in a sense observation, and introverted sensation is in a sense impressions. The difference between the intuitive and the sensation functions is that while intuition is concerned with the possibilities and associations and what the thing could be, and in many ways is naturally imaginative and anticipating in its perceptions, always looking beyond the actual nature of the object, sensation is first concerned with what the object actually is now, what we know it is doing now, what its properties are aside from any imaginative or wishful thinking, since predictions can be made later when the thing itself is finally understood. However, to sensation, such anticipations always pale in comparison to the vividness of the actual current thing. For intuition, it's the other way around. Now, sensation as a word, although we generally associate that word with only the physical, if we extend that to sensations of any kind, then what we have is stimulation caused by a thing itself. The human senses, whether physical, mental, spiritual, etc., sense a thing or are affected by a thing, and they remark on what the sensation is like. The thing that generates such sensations, at least in my own judgment, does not have to be concrete in itself. For instance, Heidegger, a dominant introverted sensation type, was primarily concerned with very complex metaphysical questions. I believe sensation is present so long as it is experienced as a sensation from the thing itself and not just from an idea about the thing or a concept associated with the thing or what the thing could be a prediction about the thing. Whether it be a person, place, object, subject, itself an idea or concept, etc. The point I'm trying to make of sensation as I understand it is not what the person is interested in, but what aspects of those things catch their attention. For sensation, it is whatever arises from the thing itself as it stands. Intuition, on the other hand, may reference an object and accuse it of instigating the intuitive hunch. But upon inspection, one will be hard-pressed to find anything about the object itself as it stands that could have inspired such hunches. This is because intuition is not stimulated by the thing itself, but always by possibilities of the thing or associations made with the thing, ideas about the thing and not the thing itself. Intuition has a remarkable ability for ignoring the thing itself and going right to the associations. It's always leaping beyond it. As to how it can make these associations without first apprehending the object, I have no idea. But whatever method it is, I have always seen intuition and sensation, just like thinking and feeling, to be mutually disadvantaged or fundamentally uninformed in ways that only the other function can compensate for. If it were not so, if the playing field were not utterly leveled and balanced, then there would be no reason for anyone to prefer sensation. Intuition is not sensation with another layer. Intuition oversteps the object while sensation actually looks at the object first. Thus, extroverted sensation, like extroverted intuition, is objective observation, but of objects themselves aside from what they could or might be. An introverted sensation, like introverted intuition, is subjective impressions, but of the subjective impressions themselves, which are impressions of objects themselves and not secondary ideas about them. Now, with that long introduction, I will actually begin describing the main differences of extroverted sensation and introverted sensation. In order to do so, I have found particularly useful Heidegger's concept of Dasein. I should make it clear, however, 
that I am only superficially acquainted with Heidegger. So for all intents and purposes, this is not an explanation of Heidegger, but of my own ideas, which may or may not correlate with Heidegger, but do help me anyway visualize the differences between extroverted sensation and introverted sensation. Plus, docile is really fun to say, assuming that I'm pronouncing it correctly. So, extroverted sensation, because of its objective relations, is more in the moment as a function. However, I think this has often been confused or misconstrued. Extroverted sensation, at least when it's unrepressed, is not overindulgent, reactionary, unrestrained, or utterly sensual nor is it unable to operate outside of the moment, unable to think, unable to be philosophical, etc. So what is it then? This is where my understanding of Heidegger comes in. Heidegger, among a great other number of things, describes the human being as docile, referring to a being who can step back and actually contemplate its own being, and ask questions like, what does it even mean to be? However, before this kind of existential moment comes up, Dasein does not step back from itself, but is literally just another part of itself, unaware of its own existence, and even operating as though parts of the world itself were really extensions of itself. Heidegger calls this being in the world. For Heidegger, an introverted sensation type, the sensations experienced through introverted sensation are rather like the existential bird's eye view of Dasein while sensations experienced through extroverted sensation become the non-existential being in the world. Extroverted sensation is not sensuality incarnate, but is the most direct experience of objective reality possible, a being in the world where you become a moving part of the world and things become extensions of yourself and you don't look down on yourself doing things, you just do them, skillfully and in the moment navigating things. Extroverted sensation, particularly when it is more dominant, doesn't want to look down on what it's doing, at least in the sense that introverted sensation does, because that puts a separation between itself and the actual world. It wants to meld with the objects of its interest, become one with them, and become one with the objective world. Hence, you have the ESTP social navigator, or the ISTP Zen monk idea I keep referencing, or the ISFP asthete, who has trouble explaining their art because they just do it. They aren't looking down on it from a secondary point of view. Extroverted sensation is being in the world in this way. Introverted sensation, on the other hand, does want a secondary view of reality. To it, being in the world seems like a thoughtless and dangerous and reckless way to live, as Heidegger seemed to believe. To never experience the existentialist consideration of Dasein is a shallow way to live indeed, and unappreciative of the strange reality of our existence as seen from this removed point of view. What I'm driving at with that is, is that introverted sensation, being subjective, experiences sensations second-hand through their relationship to the subject. Therefore, in my opinion, introverted sensation is the concept of Dasein incarnate, that function which stands back and considers its own being and says, that is an interesting thing I'm seeing. It seems kind of like this other thing I heard about. Introverted sensation in a peculiar way examines its own perception of things. Thus, we have the stereotypical introverted sensation cautiousness, which is often misinterpreted and misconstrued as fear. But introverted sensation is no more related to fear than introverted intuition is related to fear. It is simply contemplative and considering of its perceptions, which can be good or bad depending on the circumstances. Let me say it again. Introverted sensation experiences the world secondhand. Whenever it senses a thing, it doesn't really sense the thing, but the impressions the thing makes. That is how the thing relates to the subject's consciousness. It is therefore rather like Dasein, standing back and looking at things, or looking at itself, looking at it, and thinking about what that means. As a result of this, introverted sensation tends to be cautious, approaching the future not as an in-the-moment improviser, but as a planner, watching what it is itself is doing, removed from the world in a fundamental way and looking down on it, which naturally encourages a different outlook on things directly opposed to the extroverted sensation being in the world. For example, if you show extroverted sensation a red balloon, extroverted sensation will say, 
well, gee, it's a red balloon. It's an oval shape. It's made of this kind of latex. It's got that string, which is cheaply made, and I can recognize the factory design, actually. It's a certain kind of balloon. It's a certain shade of red, and I can't remember which, but I can ask, and so and so. As some people have commented, it is rather like most portrayals of Sherlock Holmes. It examines the object in great visceral detail. Introverted sensation, however, is much different than that, and is more reminiscent of introverted intuition. Introverted sensation sees the red balloon, but in a sense, it sees the red balloon as Dawson would. The body sees the balloon, and Dawson considers and is impressed by how the balloon looks like this other balloon it saw, or is reminiscent of the kind of balloon at this one birthday party, or they may like the shape or the material, not for its own virtue, but because it relates positively to something else. In all cases, introverted sensation does not really perceive the balloon, but perceives the relationships their mind makes with the balloon, forming almost a mosaic or composite image of the balloon, which can be very telling about certain aspects of its nature that extroverted sensation would miss. In my experience, these impressions do have a tendency to be historical or memory-related, but it is not limited to that, and it is much more interesting and useful than just a historic record. So, in some sense, we could summarize extroverted sensation versus introverted sensation as an experience of attachment versus detachment, of direct being in the world versus indirect standing above and considering the world from a separate standpoint. The one trusts and enjoys the immediate objective information from the object, the other distrusts this immediate information and seeks to understand objects through composite images within the subject. One prefers to do things reflexively, naturally, and in the moment, brilliantly improvising and accommodating each changing detail as it comes. The other prefers to consider, plan, and move slow and steady, maintaining an impenetrable and infallible position. I hope that this was useful to you, um, and I will do my very best to answer any questions in the comment section below. Thank you very much for all of the support. I really do appreciate all the comments, and I'm glad that I, I have this great opportunity. Um, and I do mean that in all genuineness. So thank you, um, and uh, be sure to have a good week.